Hello there, welcome. So I've got a few random videos on this channel, but this one I wanted to do because I thought it would be helpful to people who uh, take medication. So insulin, or maybe they inject themselves uh, for some other reason, some other medical need that they may have. Now, the topic I wanted to talk about is when you want to go on holiday for an extended period of time. So if you're going on a particularly long haul flight, so rather than just you know, just a few hours, maybe three or four hours. Maybe if you're going to the other side of the world, you might be, you know, traveling on the plane for uh, up to or even over 24 hours if you've got changes and things like that. So when you're taking medication um, overseas on a long haul flight, then you may need to keep that medication cool and that can be a problem. Now that will, I'm sure, depend on the sort of medication that you are taking. Um, some medications would actually uh, be perfectly okay um, in room temperature conditions uh, for up to about a month. But if you are going on holiday for longer than that and you have limited access to uh, cooling your medication, then you might find that you're in a bit of a sticky situation and you need to find a way around it. So what you're gonna be needing to do is keep that medication cool as if it was in a fridge the whole time um, until you do get to somewhere where you can put the medication in a fridge safely and you've got controlled conditions. So uh, this is a problem that I came across. Um, I was going to go on a long haul flight and I, you know, by the time you've, you've left the house, you've um, uh, got a taxi or a bus, whatever, to the airport and then you've got to wait around, you know, check in and get on the plane and then you've got changes on the way and then the other end you've got to get your bags and you've got to get to your hotel or get to your family's house or whatever. Add on all of that time and you can probably go for up to like 36 hours if you're going to the other side of the world. And if you're trying to keep medication between say two and eight degrees, um, you know, or at least like five degrees like you would have in the fridge, then you're going to have some difficulty with that. Now, you've probably already done some research yourself and you've seen online, you can actually uh, buy these travel packs, travel like cool bags uh, for medication for such a problem. So I had a look myself and yes, there are some available out there, but the problem I found uh, was well, a few problems actually. Um, one of them is the cost. Uh, they can be a little bit pricey. Uh, the other thing is they tend to use gel packs and that means that, you know, you, sure, you can put them in the freezer at home and you can, you know, get them nice and cool and, and put them in the, the special travel pack. But when you're on your journey, that's going to cool down, uh, that's going to warm up, obviously, and you'll need to um, cool it down again. And you may not have access to somewhere where you can put that in a freezer. Very unlikely, actually. Um, and especially on the plane, you know, they're probably not really going to want to take a gel pack in their freezer with all of their um, passenger food. So it was things like that that made me think, well, there must be another way. And I also haven't mentioned that um, if you want the, the, the special uh, travel packs that go for a longer period, because some do actually go for up to 36 hours, um, <clears throat> those ones, apart from the fact that they're they're very expensive, they're also quite bulky. And I didn't, didn't want any of those issues myself. I just wanted a simple solution that was affordable and gave me flexibility on my journey. So I thought, well, what is it I could do? And in these sorts of situations, I think, try and think outside the box and try and think, well, can I use something else that isn't designed for this and adapt it to work for what I wanted to do? So then when I was looking online for uh, some sort of container, you know, some sort of travel pack that I could put my medication in, uh, I came across uh, a flask and inside the flask it had this uh, bottle that you'd fill with water and it was, it was curved as well. So it fit in the flask and then next to this bottle that you'd cooled, um, then you could put the medication. But you've probably already worked out the, the problem I already had with it was that yes, you can put the water in it and freeze it, but then you need to 
uh, put it back in the freezer when it warms up again. So it's the same problem really as the gel pack. But it did give me the idea of, hang on a minute, well this is just basically a thermos flask, isn't it? You know, or an insulated flask. So I thought, well, surely I should just get an insulated flask. Um, but then the problem is that when you've got one of those flasks, the opening is quite small and I want to put in, you know, my medication in there and I might want to put in some ice in there as well. So then when I started to look around online, I found that uh, you can actually buy like a, a soup um, insulated flask. So I had a look around in town and I found this one. Now this one is by Mountain Warehouse. So this was like really cheap, it was, it was actually reduced. I think it was originally 30 or 35 and it's just 20 pounds. Um, now I'm sure you could find uh, plenty of other ones that do the same job, maybe cheaper or maybe more expensive, you know, I don't know. But this is what suited me. So, uh, and the, oh, the other thing is with this, of course, is that, you know, once I've used this for transporting medication, I can use it as a normal flask with, whereas with one of those special medical travel packs, it's only good for that. So if I'm only making this trip like <laughs> once every five years, cause you know, we don't often go on these really long haul trips where we need to do this sort of thing well then it's just gonna sit around and do nothing and be wasted. So at least this way, I've got something I can actually use again for um, a practical purpose. So when I was in the shop, I was looking at this and like, is it, you know, is it long enough to put my medication in? Is it, is it big enough inside? So let's open it up. Okay. So you get all the normal stuff you get with a, a insulated flask. Okay, so you know, got your little cup and all that stuff. Um, but the important thing is how big this is. So I've got a ruler here. So this one is, let's see, it's uh, about 74 millimeters, or in old money, uh, just under three inches, okay? And depth-wise, now it's a bit difficult to measure because there's a little bit of extra space on this ruler, but um, it is about uh, about 11 and a half centimeters of depth where I can put my medication in there. Okay, so it's pretty decent. Now, uh, so if I get one of my injection pens here, so I can put that in there, and you see I've got to have a bit of space at the top, if you can see that. Got to have a bit of space at the top because this is going to go actually in there and fill this gap here. So I need to make sure that that is going to go on and fully screw on, which it does. And it doesn't, it just about fits. I mean, actually, these are used Epi pens, so they're slightly taller than they would be. They'd be actually probably more like that rather than up here. But um, anyway, you get the idea. So. Yeah, that goes in just fine. And I can put three in here. Okay. All right, like that. And uh, then of course, I really, what I need to do is put some um, something cold in there with it. So ice or an ice pack, but as I said, an ice pack wouldn't be any good because I've got to uh, freeze it again during the trip. So I thought, right, well, somehow I've got to get ice in there but in a container, you know, it's no good me just chucking ice in next to it, it's gonna freeze the medication. So you need to have some way of separating it. Um, so I thought, well, maybe I could just get like a shampoo bottle or something like that, you know, some sort of, just some sort of container that you'd get for something you'd buy in the supermarket and just shove some ice in it. But of course the trouble with that is that all of those have these you know, small caps on, and the opening is really small, so you can't get an ice cube in there. And yes, okay, maybe when I'm on the plane or I'm at the airport lounge or something, I could get some ice and ask them to crush it up or something, but that's just gonna be a big faff. The last thing I wanna be doing is stressing about that. You just wanna get some ice, chuck it in, and be done with it. So I was like, right, well, somehow I've gotta get some sort of container in there which is sealed, but also I can open, open it easily. 
um, because you know I, I could put some sort of container in there and like seal it all shut um, but then when it all starts to melt and I need to replace it I've got to then open it all again so I was like well how can I do this I haven't got any at the moment any sort of uh, bottle container where I can screw on a cap and seal it that way because all of the caps are all too small so I can't get ice in there so I had to think of some other way of um, getting ice in here in a container that I could seal it so they might there's probably a much better solution that I haven't thought of yet but for the time being what I came up with just was just buying some like plumbing pipe um, now I couldn't actually seem to find any way of like any sort of plug um, like a plumbing plug or cap. I couldn't find any sort of cap that I could just stick on the end of the pipe. Um, everything that I looked at in the hardware store seemed to be had to glue it on or probably put thread on or something like that. So I was like, well, I know at the very least that the plumbing pipe would be big enough. I could put some ice cubes in there, but then it's like, well, how can I seal it? So then I was looking online and going on eBay and Amazon and, and you know, typing in caps and plugs and bungs and stuff and then what I found is these like science lab bungs and the great thing about these is that they come in different sizes they they tell you the millimeters you know the the, the diameter of the top and the diameter of the bottom and how tall they are so I could get the perfect size for the tube that I was going to use okay so this is just yeah some plumbing pipe <laughs> I had to buy three meters of this just to get like about 11 centimeters of it. So it was a bit daft, but, um, and then also what I did when I got this tubing, I just sanded off the edges because when I cut it, I had a really sharp edge and that was digging into the rubber and I didn't want that. So I just wanted it to ease in when I put the rubber in just to ease in and create a nice seal. So I've sanded all that off and then I can just press that in quite nicely like that. It's a good seal. And then I, this is the, the diameter of this is, so the internal diameter is uh, 30, about 38, 39 millimeters or an inch and a half, okay? Uh, I think actually it was Imperial when I bought this, but anyway, um, so I can get a whole ice cube in there, a standard ice cube, and I can get, I think about five or six tall in that, uh, for this particular configuration. I won't get some ice now and put it in, I'll probably make a big mess, but, so anyway, I can put all that in there and just cap that off. And actually, I think what I had to do, I had to put that in first, otherwise it's a bit tricky to get the medication in. So if I, see if I put that in there, it sort of falls into the, into, into the, um, the recess a bit. And then I can put these in around it, okay, like that, see? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some um, corrugated plastic, like just some sort of packing material, you get it, if you, if you were like ordering some large photos, you often get this corrugated plastic sheeting, um, so I'll put that between the um, the tubing with the ice in it and the medication and that'll just create a little bit of insulation and a buffer to stop any risk of the medication freezing. Now I got that idea because when I looked at the um, medic, proper medical uh, travel packs they had this basically the same stuff in a little pocket just to separate the gel packs from medication. Um, so Anyway, that fits in there quite nicely. And I can even actually, if I just jiggle it around a bit, I can actually get, I've got like a th thermometer here. So I can actually shove that in there. So during the trip, um, I can, as I say, I can, I can have, well, I can have this like this, right? So it's all done up. All right, there you go. I can't even got my cup on it. And let's do this up. Okay, right, so imagine that I'm on the plane and I've already been traveling from home for, I don't know, 12, 18 hours. And as long as I haven't opened it, it should be okay. It shouldn't like get down or get up to a temperature which causes me a problem. Um, this particular medication, I need to keep it between two and eight degrees. And this one also, you can have it at room temperature, so up to about 25 degrees 
for up to about 28 days. But because my holiday was longer than that time, then at least one of those EpiPens would need to be kept cool um, for a longer period. So I could, you know, use all three of them rather than get stuck. Um, so yeah, so let's say I'm on my trip and it's been 12 or 18 hours and I'm thinking, you know, I want to be on the safe side here. I'm probably not going to make it the whole way uh, at the correct temperature. So what I can do is I'm on the plane and at, the, at, at an appropriate moment, I can ask the stewardess, can I have some ice please? And what I'll do is I'll ask for two cups. And so I'll say, you know, can I have about five or six ice cubes in a cup and then an extra cup please? So then when she brings it or he brings it, I can uh, empty out the uh, melted ice in here into one cup and then quickly switch over and put in the new ice and then seal it all up. So the idea is that I'm not giving this to them to take away and put ice in uh, and potentially, you know, they, they don't want the responsibility and also they might be a bit slow doing it. They might get held up, you know, by people in the aisle or something. So this way I can get the ice, I can swap it over quickly and I can get it back to a safe temperature again. And that's just the beauty of it. You know, I don't have to worry about asking anyone to put anything in the freezer uh, or, or the EpiPens themselves into a fridge or worried about forgetting them or anything like that. It's just all with me, it's all safe and it hasn't leaked. And because I, because I cut the tubing here to the correct length and put the bungs on and actually when I put this on this actually presses against the bung here so it won't actually allow this to come undone so I can do this and the only thing that's wobbling about is the EpiPens and I could put a bit of padding in there as well um, but that actual tubing isn't moving that's just gripping by the rubber bungs um, so this this just works really well. So this, um, as I said, the uh, flask itself cost twenty pounds. The tubing was I think like five pounds fifty, um, which is silly really because I had to buy three meters of it. But and then the bungs actually I think they were like ten pounds actually. Um, I had to buy four of them, and uh, yeah so. So it worked out um, about 35 pounds. So it's still not like super cheap, but I have got a flask at least I can use. It's not completely useless. I can give it away. I can sell it, you know, it's, it's much better than just having some travel pack, which is uh, no good after I've used it or don't use it for like years. Uh, just one other thing I should mention actually, and that's that when you are preparing for your trip, I suggest you take this flask, take it all to pieces, put it in the freezer, and then leave it there for at least an hour, get it fully cooled down, because uh, the last thing you want to do is, you know, take it at room temperature, put the ice in, and then it's the flask itself, because it's been at room temperature, is going to warm up that ice prematurely. So you want to start with this, like, as cold as it possibly can be, um, and then you haven't got the temperatures fighting each other. So do that, and then you'll find you should get a much longer time that this stays cold, um, I tested it a couple of times. The first time I kept on opening it all the time, every number of hours to check, see what it was doing. So I didn't get quite as long a time. The first time I think I got about 18 hours before it was beyond the temperature range that I wanted it in. So then the next time I put it in the freezer first, got it all fully cooled down, uh, sealed it all up and then didn't open it again for I think 23 hours and by that time it was up to eight degrees which is like the limit so I would feel very comfortable leaving this for 18 hours and not opening it um, and then you know then I could change the ice over at that point and that is more than enough time you know if you get in a coach to the airport checking in getting on the flight by the time you've done all that you've probably elapsed about five or six hours so you've got plenty of flexibility there because you're going to be sat on that plane for a long time so you can get that ice in there. So yeah, that's what to do. So hopefully that'll be helpful to someone out there because um, I certainly had a look around online and I was really struggling to find some good solutions. Um, you know, they weren't expensive and ones that were flexible did what I needed to do. 
um, and are easy to access and, and change things over. Now, please do understand that this is just my opinion and this is what I have done myself. Um, it may not work for you. Um, I don't want to be held responsible for if you mess it up or you know something happens to your medication. So this is entirely at your own risk, but this is just an idea that I had, which I thought uh, worked pretty well. So if you think it's helpful too, please do give this a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to, uh, you know, share this video. There, I'm sure there'll be lots of people you know um, who potentially could have this problem and uh, need to figure out a way around it. So please do share this, do share this video with people who have medication they need to take um, on a long haul flight or wherever it is they may be going and they haven't got access to uh, calling facilities um, or reliable calling facilities and this could be their solution.